Hello everybody, this is Michael Graves again, KE4EST, and I've had several questions asked about the Amico. This one here is the Amico Mini HD RE, like the reborn of the SE. And I'm going to go through a couple things here and show a couple things so you can see some of it. And what I'm going to do now, this is a box that I just got straight out of the box, plugged it up, and this is what you're going to see. And then I hit the menu button, and it'll probably be right here on the service like that. Just come over, use your right arrow, get over here to system, and then hit the OK button. Now I've also already got a USB uh, flash drive stuck in the back of it there to uh, do upgrade. And what we're going to do is upgrade here come over here go down to software upgrade oh by the way let's go back one now if you exit this is going to take us all the way out of everything but if you're in a menu somewhere and you want to go back one menu setting us hit menu <clears throat> okay now we got if you go over here to information this will tell you what software version you currently have in it like this one here is straight from the factory here before I have one where I'm ready to ship out or whatever. So hit menu. Okay, let's go over here to software upgrade. And then of course it's kind of self-explanatory on upgrade by USB. Um, let's go back. You can see there's a upgrade by satellite there or upgrade by RS-232, which you could do. Uh, we don't have anything set up here in North America to do upgrade by satellite and the FTP upgrade is not really set up or HTTP so upgrade by USB and then here you want to find your file I hit the OK button is what I did I'll come down here so I've got several on here and I'm going to come up to this one right here this is the newest upgrade um, and then what you want to do, now say you go on my website or you guys want to get some firmware and you're wanting to do a whole straight. Now if you just want to upgrade and keep your channel list, but I still recommend you go in. I can show you that in a minute. There's a way to go in and back up your channel lists and all that. But if you go right here, you can see if you move through these or drop this down, you got channel list only. This is what you're upgrading. Um, but if you want to save try to save everything and usually it does I've not had any problems with it go to software no channel list that is upgrade your firmware and use firmware but it'll keep your North American satellite list and keep all your channels you got scanned in and everything but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to all software plus the bootloader okay then you will come down to start and hit start and you just sit here and give it a second and it's going to go through. Now right here at this point, if you've got bad firmware, if you download the wrong firmware for this receiver, it's going to come up right here and tell you, before it even gets to any of this blue bar going across here, it'll say, you know, invalid, I forget what it says exactly, uh, but it'll tell you that the uh, boot ROM is invalid or something like that. It'll go through, and you can't see it either, but down on the box itself, on the front of the box, it's actually counting up 0 to 100. Now, it's great successful, so it's going to reboot. And this here is going to take a second. Um, it completely shuts everything down. Just give it a second. Also, on the front of the box, if you look, it'll have ON, O-N like capital letters and then it'll drop down to lowercase letters when it does that you know everything's good if you never see that uh oh as soon as it drops down now we got the Amico logo on the screen and it should come back up to no channel list well I still got the drive inserted okay now we go to menu and installation and then from there you go to satellite installation you'll see See, there's my call sign right there. That's uh, one of my lists. But I'll put that as number one to know that that's one of the list. You know, my list, and this is what date I updated it or whatever. I can see KE4EST 2017 June of uh, 14th day of June. 
But if you come down now, you see we have North American satellite list in there. But something else you want to do, if you do what I did, I'll go ahead and go through the whole, most of the time, you know, if you get one from me or whatever, it's going to be ready to go. But a couple things you'll want to do. Now, like this TV here, it doesn't care what you hook to it. If it's 50 hertz or 60 hertz, PAL, NTCS, whatever, it don't care. It'll figure it out and display it. It automatically sorts it out and does it for you. But that's another thing you want to make sure of too. You might want to make sure you got a TV like that or you have to... On the remote, there's a button to press called V Format. If you can't see your screen after it goes through a reboot, <clears throat> it's looking good. You got the big on, the little on on the front of the receiver and okay, he said everything's good. Why am I not seeing anything? It may be over uh, on the wrong thing. You get a system and go to AV control and see right here in display mode this is set for 1080i 50 hertz a lot of TVs will not be displaying this properly so um, you just hit that and come down and change it to whatever I usually ship these things out I'll go ahead and set this one to 720 because there's still a lot of people that's got you know a cheaper or older HD TV and it won't go to 1080 and it'll do some strange it'll also do some strange stuff on the screen uh, so I do that all this other stuff's optional whatever you want to you know set on your uh, OSD transparency at your own screen display transparency and your brightness and all that stuff hit menu and it should save it don't hit exit hit menu it'll save it now you see we've got a couple more things here and like this uh, import E2 data and stuff that's we don't have anything set up over here for that um, if you go now back down to information you're going to see that the software version has changed and you see now right now it shows you down the very corner of the screen there it says menu for back and exit to exit so I hit menu now one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to default setting and this has got default say I did this and like oh Man, I lost my channel list or whatever. I messed it up. You can go down, and hit default value right here, and hit default value and say yes, restore default. And it's got a little place over there, and it's double EEPROM that it stores all the things from the last time. Right now, okay, everything's looking good. I'm going to say save default value. Do you want to set current database as the default data? Yes. And it's going to do it. It'll take you but a second. Uh, save it off in there now if you totally mess something up don't like whatever and reset the box do a factory reset on the box um, which it, well it wasn't there where was the factory reset it's oh that's what they're calling now default value you go to default value and that's your factory reset and now the factory is set to this and stuff it's got the North American channel list and all that in there. Now the firmware will stay the same, but you won't lose your channel list. Um, but that's how to go through and do that. And I'll do another video on blind scanning and showing some of the stuff in the receiver. But uh, there you go. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. This is Michael, K4EST.